how it is done is basically the project proposal or you can say the business applications requirement are jotted down and they are actually taken in as an input for the BDD uh, or for the test and the stakeholders can actually evaluate by running these tests or through this approach that what they required was given out or not. So uh, if you say that that's something that happens in real life applications, right? Uh, the first thing before the development is the requirement that is collected is actually given to the testers. Okay, this is what is going to be expected out of the functionality. So you need to write a test for that. So they know that this is done. But the only difference with PDD and BDD is that in PDD we write tests before, but in BDD we write the behaviors after the code has been done. Uh, anyone wants to elaborate on that, please? Or I'll probably not elaborate. Okay. So that was the practical implementation. Like we first capture the behavior, and then we write the implementations for that features, and then we validate whether it's passing or not, or whether it's required, or we need to make some changes further, or we need to. And this process goes on till we have the whole application or the whole functionality. Okay, next is like the tools that we have with Drupal 8 right now. Uh, compatible. That is Drupal. The other one is Codeception. We have PHP unit as well as CLN. These four are the major tools we can use to actually work around with Drupal 8 right now. And all of them work with Drupal 7 as well. Uh, so, let's just move ahead with BDD concepts. This is what I explained BDD was. I'm going to probably take this with the, uh, explaining how we had actually works. Uh, before that, how many people know have or have worked on BDD? Okay. So, in BDD, uh, very basic thing. Uh, I guess it's a kickstart for Beehard right now, so there's not going to be something wow or extra going to happen in this session. So, uh, the definition of Beehard. Beehard is a <coughs> behavior driven development in PHP framework. Uh, and uh, Beehard is actually uh, written with a special language called Gherkin. Uh, Gherkin is basically your normal English language. It's it's not uh, like you write in JavaScript or something different. So so that's why it becomes in handy for the QA who have who don't have much knowledge of uh, you can say PHP or any other framework which the, the application is made on. Uh, plus, it is more readable for the stakeholders. So they can read through it in normal English language. Oh, I wanted this, I wanted this. Okay, this is now done. That's how it is useful for stakeholders as well. Uh, so, uh, how we have actually works. I'll probably get back on Gherkin because uh, Gherkin, and I'll explain you how Gherkin is written actually and all the elements of that. Uh, it's it's going to come. But if I have now uh, how we had works, we have four elements basically in which we are going to look. First is the feature files, second is the scenarios, and then we have tags, and we have hooks. First, uh, now let's get back to Gherkin because that is what is going to be written in your feature files. So Gherkin is basically your language that Kukumber, that's another cycle, uses and has been there. Uh, why Gherkin was used is basically it was developed so that the non-technical uh, users or human beings can actually understand what's being done because this is a very English normal language so they can actually relate to it and understand what's required. Uh, uh, let's move on to the feature files 
and for future files basically what is done is what you want to do or what the feature is actually being made for is written in this and to uh, the feature files basically have the dot feature extension and we write all the scenarios in this scenarios are written over here and it basically delivers what the application is going to do or what behavior it is going to do. Uh, so we actually have in feature dot uh, feature dot uh, dot feature files. We have first something called feature that is the keyword used to identify the feature. And in features, we actually write down only a few lines, which are normal English language, which actually explains what this file is going to do. And uh, then we have few lines describing the files, and then we have the scenarios written outlined in this one. This is an example. Uh, I have taken an example of giving the agent uh, money needs to be withdrawn from an ATM machine. So this is how it is going to be. Features. Over there we have it explaining what this feature file is going to do. <coughs> Withdraw money from ATM. First of all, a user needs to have an account in the bank and it needs to have a valid ATM card. So you actually write this down so that the stakeholders or the person who is reading it understands what this whole feature file is going to do or what the functionality is it's going to cover. It's a brief description and it's like this. And then you have your scenarios. You can have multiple scenarios in your feature files depending upon what the functionality you want to cover in them. Uh, this next is scenarios. Uh, for scenarios, basically, you have an individual behavior or small part of functionality which you want to cover in this. You actually outline that. For example, in this, I want to see that how he withdraws the money. So I have written this like, Eric wants to withdraw some money from his ATM card. So what needs to be done? First of all, he needs to have a valid a credit card or debit card. Then his account balance should have some money and he inserts his card in the ATM machine and then he withdraws the money. Now the way, now what does the ATM, mach machine, uh, sorry, ATM machine should do? It should give you the money. And lastly the account balance should be updated or you should see that now my balance is this. So this is a small example of the say for the scenario. If anyone has some questions please feel free to ask. Okay, next thing comes like scenario outlines. There are times when we want to have the same scenario repeat for three or four users or something like we want to have the multiple scenario, multiple times this implementation of scenarios. So we are not going to write the scenario again and again. There's one thing called scenario outlines. What it does is it's going to run the scenario each time you have an entry for it. How is it done? Uh, so we, instead of using scenario, we use scenario outlines. In scenario outlines, you actually write down your scenario, but instead of putting the values, you actually write down tokens <coughs> or placeholders. And later on, in your below, you write examples where you actually put in the values of your tokens or placeholders. So what it does is we have, will actually run this scenario multiple times. It will go through each row, replace those tokens with those values and run it. So you have small code which might run for 10 times or 12 times but you have written only once. So it, it, it is really useful for, for features or you can say behaviors which need some functionality and it needs to be done multiple amount of times. Like, for even if you want to check something like, uh, I add this much, then I subtract this much in your multiples or multiplications and all this thing. Plus, like how to calculate the transactions being done. Like, if your functionality deals with something like this, if this was added and this was subtracted, how much is there? 
something like this or probably uh, what I have used it is to actually the Drupal was to te test that my content types or my vocabularies actually have the values or predefined values. That was my usage basically where I used it. Uh, the next thing is background. With background is basically sometimes you need that a precondition or you want some predefined things to be already existing before my scenario works because there are a lot of times that my scenario will actually fail because some conditions was missing and it's very hard for you to find as a QA or a stakeholder why is it not working why what has been left so for us to ensure that some that uh, some context for all the fe uh, for the features is already available. We use backgrounds. Uh, so your background is your untitled scenario. It contains a number of steps. Uh, the difference would be that the background is always run before your scenario, but after one book, which is your before scenario. So for example. In the same, uh, this I have used is like given that Eric, who wants to withdraw money from his ATM machine, should actually have a account with the bank, and he should his balance should not be null for him to have a successful withdrawal. So this was the background. This will ensure that it runs first, then the the scenario is run. In case something is missing in your background, the whole feature file will not be run because. All because as I said that your background runs before the feature file or before the scenarios, so you know that okay, this is not the precondition is not available for us. Right. The next is how we can write the steps. Steps. Uh, Okay, all the scenarios when we were seeing that we had given thens, and buts, and we, these are basically your steps. Uh, your scenario file or your scenario basically contains multiple steps, uh, which actually describes your behavior or each action that is being performed. So, for steps, we have some keywords already defined, which are given then when and and what. I have actually uh, uh, actually written why we use gave with when, then and what. For given basically uh, we have some uh, for given it is like you need to know where your system is right now or at which position or you can say which state my application is right now. So for given, like I want to be on this URL right now, so I'll probably write that given I am on this URL first. Because that is the, the starting point for my scenario. And then uh, there is when. In when basically you describe what user action is going to be done. If I click on this, when I click on this, when I visit this, when I do this, then there comes then. What is expected out of this? What is the outcome of the action that was performed earlier? And then we have and and buts, which are helpers for then, or you can say what was done in an action before is when. For and, it is like you have something like and is just I saw this and I saw this, or I should expect this result and I should expect this result. In with but you, it is basically in negation that but this should not be working or this is not expected. Next is actually uh, discovering your defined steps. Uh, when we are having we had with Drupal 8, there are a lot of things that Drupal 8 extension gives you already. So you don't have to write your steps again. You already have it built, how you can use them. For that, we actually have a command called dhat hyphen dl. It actually gives you the listing of all the uh, predefined 
steps that are already available and you can use them for your scenarios. Uh, and then if you want to have more information about that, you can actually use hyphen D L. Uh, where it is useful is like I am a dev I'm a developer or I have not actually worked on V hat and I feel like I know oh, what it is, I don't know anything. How will I write my steps? So I can actually go and just type this command and I can see the whole listing of my already predefined things. And it actually gives you an insight of if you want to write something similar or something different uh, from uh, what is already given and you can't, don't want to change it. You can actually take a copy of it and actually modify it according to your own needs. There it is actually helpful. Plus it is helpful for uh, the QA people because uh, they can actually write the test case from using something called as link extension which already gives you some functionalities like clicking on links and already defined there. You just need to replace the tokens and you need to write like I, this button needs to be clicked for this. So they can actually write this over there. Okay. Uh, whenever we actually have the steps, we expect some results out of it. Either it's failed, passed. How is it done? We have actually set states in V hat which actually gives which gives you uh, whether your step was passed or not. Basically, these are undefined. Uh, for undefined, in case I write a step definition which does not have a match existing in my feature, uh, I write a step in my feature file which does not have a context already available there. It, it does not know what it needs to be done. Then it will give me a definite, uh, give me a exception saying it is undefined. You need to actually write this down. So this is helpful there where uh, people have just written in feature files and they expect that this needs to be done, but it's not already available. So you can actually know and you can write it down in your context. Next is pending. Uh, something. A pending is basically uh, something uh, like a definition which you had actually written, uh, like when you act when you have not defined, you actually copied it down and you wrote it, but you have not given an action what needs to be performed. Then the exception of pending is returned. That something needs to be returned by this uh, by this step definition that is expected out of it. So the exception there is pending. Then we have skipped. Basically when you have your undefined definitions or pending definitions, what happens to the steps that are written below it? Whether they will be run or not, whether they will be giving a pass or a fail, nothing like this happens. They are actually skipped. So the color, when you actually see them, the color, there's a color difference and you can identify that this was skipped or not. Plus, you already get a result where saying this this steps was Skip. So there is no way uh, that we can avoid that skipping? It actually gives you the best thing for we had is that it will tell you an exception. In any case, if it was failed, it was passed or something. The above step was, uh, the state of the above step is given so you know that that's why it was skipped. Otherwise it will go. <coughs> You will not know what happened, so it's not right. You should know. Yeah, I was just asking because I was imagining the scenario where I say, given I am on the URL and I click on this link, let's say XYZ link, and I click on ABC link. So maybe XYZ got skipped, uh, like XYZ gave me an error, but I, ABC actually worked, but it got skipped. So there's no way. Uh, yeah, it will proceed further, but it depends that it had the dependency. Like, if your link was uh, available on that page, which was not rendered yet, or you did not find the link. In your example, you clicked on one link and then you clicked on another link. Yeah, but my first link was not existing, no? so it was undefined. So, but my second is 
step or my first step was valid, my second was not. So you need to say if, if my second is got an error saying that the link is undefined or could not find that link, my third link would be checked. Like my test would not proceed further and check the third link if it is valid. No, it will actually. If, if, if the elevator is on the same page, it will actually move ahead. In, in skip is basically you, if you had some pending, uh, uh, if something was, if the definition was not available or if you had something undefined and it was dependent on that. Like I said, if one, if your uh, button or you can say your element was on the other page and you had written a uh, step before that, that click on this page and then you click on the other link which was going to come from the next page. Then in that case, it will actually get skipped because it did not find the element. Yeah. So it depends upon what the def or what the step was before. The next execution will depend upon that. Then we have failed in case something was something went wrong. If we were expecting an element or if we were expecting something out of it and it was not available, then we have a fail. Next is ambiguous. Uh, in ambiguous, basically, I, I, I'll tell you, in, because there's one more, because they are correlated or they're a little different and it gets written. That, uh, that is redundant. In ambiguous, it is like you have a step definition which actually has a context, like given I am, given I should see this, and you actually pass in a regex. And you have something, another definition which is similar to this. So when B hat is actually running, it gets confused between which, uh, which is the actual implementation. That is ambiguous. That in that case, it will give you that this is ambiguous because there were two step definitions which actually fulfill the same uh, criteria or your step uh, you define. Then there's redundant. In redundant, basically, B hat doesn't let you write the same step definition again. If you have mentioned it again, then it will give you redundant. Because it only wants one step definition. It doesn't want multiple step definitions. If you write multiple step definitions, it will get confused. That what was the intention of writing two, which needs to be the correct one. So you have this. And last is success. If everything runs correctly, it will give you a green thing and you will be happy. Oh, finally my test works. Okay, so next is tags. Tags is basically a way of categorizing your thing, of how you can actually work across your scenarios and have uh, multiple things. Uh, I mean, uh, I want to have these three scenarios working for one behavior, suppose. So how will we categorize? We use tags in this case. Uh, where we can actually apply the tags is about feature files, scenarios, your scenario outlines, and your uh, examples. These are the places you can actually write tags before. In case you write somewhere else, like if you write in background, it will give you an exception. It will throw in that it's not working. So these are the only four places where you can actually write tags. So uh, it is basically a way of categorizing your things in tags. Next is your hooks. Uh, before that, I'll just tell you what hooks does. It's, it's not the Drupal hooks. Uh, because what it does is when you're writing your application or you're writing your test, there are places where you would want to have certain conditions or preconditions that needs to be done. Or you want to actually change the logic behind it before that. So it gives you an entry point at various places where you can actually change the step definitions or you can have your preconditions or you can actually write that, no, I don't want this, I want that. So these are basically your entry points. Uh, the, with B hat, we have actually some uh, hooks that are already defined and we can actually use them. 
uh, as well as you can actually associate your tags along your hooks. So you know that, uh, okay, we'll probably take it in the next slide before we actually cover the hooks. Okay, so you, the entry points for hooks are at uh, before your suit, suite, then your after suite, and before your feature, after feature, before any scenario, and after scenario, before any step, or after a step. So if we actually see across them, your before suite is basically before any VHAT test is run, before any feature file is loaded. If you want to make some changes, you can do it over here. Similarly, after your suite has ended, you want to do something. You use this. You can actually set this where uh, before suit would be, a uh, best example would be, I don't want to hit this side. This is my production side. I don't want to create my database over here. I would rather have a mock-up database somewhere placed, I want to hit that. One example could be this. After could be like if you have done some, uh, some created some contents and all, but you don't want to keep the content there. You can actually write in your after suit that, okay, just, manage, uh, just wipe out that database and get back my installation back, uh, get my uh, old uh, Database map. Copy of that. Uh, next is your before feature files. Okay, if I want to have get something done before my feature one feature file, I can actually have it there. That before running this feature, just do these things. Similar ways after my feature has run, do this thing. If I want to set a state for my feature file before, which is different than what is right now present in my application, I can do it over here. And after I can just replace it and put my application back into the same feature uh, state. Uh, similarly, as you say, uh, as this is before scenario and after scenario, is like it is actually done for each scenario file. So, if I want to actually do something before my scenario, like if I want my uh, JavaScript or my browser to be at certain uh, you can say configuration like certain screen size. I will do that. Uh, next is like before step, before every give, given, then, but it's going to work over here. Okay, this is an example of hook. I have actually taken an example of before scenario where I am setting my screen size of my browser. That I want my window size to be of this whenever my uh, Firefox or my uh, browser is loaded. With, uh, for doing that, I need to actually have to write this uh, use my namespace of before, uh, before scenario scope and for after it is after scenario scope. If I am actually using these classes, these functions, it will not work until and unless I have import, I have written this uh, name spaces. It's not going to be working correctly. That's one thing that is required. Next is tag hooks. Like I was saying, that in case I have written a before scenario, but I don't want it to run for each and every scenario. Like I have a, uh, my V hat suit is like having 100 scenarios. I don't want my hook to be running each time, but I want to run it for specific scenarios, then I'll probably add in the tag. So what it does is uh, when you actually write in your uh, feature file, you'll probably write the same tag. For example, like here, I have this before scenario tag attached to it. In my feature file, before my scenario outline or before my scenario, I'll write the same tag. So what it does is that it will identify that this before scenario or this tag needs to be run for this and it's going to do that. Next you can actually see over here is that I have and also. 
So what it's going to do is that it's going to look for the at the rate database and it's also going to look for at the rate fixture. If my both conditions are fulfilled, my both tasks are done, then only my this function needs to be run. If something is failing, one out of two, then it's not going to be run. So you can actually use and and ors in along with that. If you want to have a good suit where you don't want to use multiple, uh, you don't want to run your befores and afters multiple times. Like uh, uh, if you have something like this needs to be done for authenticated user, I create my tag. It is it can be anything. I create something like at the rate authenticated. So I want some, another scenario that needs to be run for authenticated users only. It doesn't need to be run for this, or it has a dependency that this permission needs to be assigned before my actual the, the other scenario works. So I'll probably tag it along with at the rate authenticated, so both are going to run each time. It, 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 it identifies for this, the other tag also needs to be run. So we had actually runs through tags as well, through feature files. First, it will look for feature files. In feature files, if it finds a tag, it will look in your tool. Is there another tag for this as well? If there is, it will run that scenario again. It might be defined in a different feature dot feature file. So it thinks that these are categorized together and these needs to be run together. Screenshots, you need to configure it. And there's an extension which will match your screenshots as well, how it goes down. Uh, I have not seen because we had actually supports that it depends upon your extension. If it's actually supporting those browsers, it will work. testing and some functionality to that extent we can use it now it depends upon if we have to develop for your behavior if your behaviors are more you can use it to that extent it depends completely on what is required out of your functionality so to answer this question like you can test the form with we had yeah like given you are on this URL and you enter the username and you enter the password and you click on submit, right? Yes. Okay, next is the text. We actually work right now with features and we realized now for my step definitions, if I write something for the custom, I need to have something in back end which will actually test it. What feature does, it, it actually uh, describes how your application is going to behave, but what context is, does is it is actually going to test your application. So in simple words, it's, it's, it's this context. Uh, 
next is for context we whenever you actually install your drupal you actually uh, when you bootstrap your v hat uh, a file is already created that is the feature context so in that file we have this class already available in this class i will write my action that okay this needs to be done how it is written is it's written like this when i do something something should be expected okay uh, what about i if i want to use multiple context in case like i want to use uh, my feature context uh, and i want to use link context as well and i want to use the selenium context i want to use selenium as well I want to use Drush context. I want to use all all this thing that is given out to me. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. How is it possible? In your vhat.yml, when you actually define your context, you can do this thing. Like for feature context is your main context in which whatever you are going to write, it's going to be there. But if you want to use some other extension, then it is done in your vhat.yml file. For example. Uh, this is actually at, if if your application is very big and you are actually going to write lot of we had test what it's going to do your feature dot context file is going to be very big very very big and in case it, it it's going to be unmanageable at some point of time and you you might not even know that some definitions were defined there and some definitions were defined uh, again so so in that case what we can do is we can actually divide it and we can have multiple context files but how will your test know that okay this context file is available in this and this is now so for that in we had dot yml you actually write your other files or you can context files from where it can find the step definitions so when we are talking in terms of drupal is i want to use drupal functionalities with my v hat and for that i only need to write that in my v hat dot yml if there is one context drupal context just include that so i'll probably have all the functionalities that drupal is giving me presently so i can modify that i can use uh, uh, my own step definitions to do multiple things for drupal Uh, right, I said for Drupal context, we actually have two things. One is raw Drupal context, and the other is Drupal context. Uh, when you actually uh, in your we had dot by oh sorry, in your feature context, you have uh, if you see it actually implements uh, your raw. Drupal context rather than Drupal context because it will actually give you all the elements that are available in that and your Drupal context actually extends raw Drupal context. That's that's how it is done. So depending like what functionalities you do, you can extend it to that level. If you want some little functionalities, you can actually use Drupal context. But if you want the raw things like I want the whole entities. And I want to have this before it is actually rendered through my Drupal even. Then you should use Drupal uh, raw Drupal context. It depends completely on your functionality. For <coughs> uh, like I said, for Drupal context, like I want to alter my node object, then I need to extend my uh, this. Uh, I I I'll probably add my Drupal context, and I need to use my uh, main space in which my node object is given out. That that I'll probably use the <coughs> Drupal extension and hooks in which I can alter this. This is how it is done. Okay. Uh, this was something like Drupal, but apart from Drupal, if I want to do something, uh, we can actually use the already uh, link along with this. What link is? Uh, it actually gives you a lot of functionality that is already uh, built. Like uh, if I want to 
write like click on elements if I want to fill some things like so I'll probably use link along with my Drupal 8 rather than actually writing my own step definitions for that. Accordingly, you actually extend your link context and that's how it is done. Okay. Next is your Phantom JS. What does Phantom JS basically does? Uh, if you are actually using VHAT directly, you will not be able to do certain functionalities because uh, what it is using is right now headless browsers. So you are not able to have the uh, ability to actually have the JavaScript functionalities or Ajax functionalities. You can't alter that or you can't have this after I press this, this should pop up. That's not going to happen. In case you want to check your uh, JavaScript uh, things or if you want to have see after some elements are clicked or your Ajax, if you want that, you will probably have to extend Phantom JS along with your VHAT file. What it will do, uh, Phantom JS is basically a headless uh, browser emulation and it will actually help you uh, have uh, JavaScript automation along with it. Uh, in VHAT, Phantom JS actually acts as a boost. What it does, it will act like it's using Selenium as a backend, but instead it's using uh, uh, Phantom JS. Uh, that was it for my session. And uh, I had uh, a demo, but certainly it was not working. So, but I can actually show you my files. This is my vhat.yml file. If that, that's what I was saying. That I wanted to use my Drupal index, so I actually had them over here. Plus, I wanted to use link, so I had my link over here. I can actually have some brush functionalities also, like I rebuild site or I clear my site. I have this thing like brush to see all brush. Site uh, install and all this thing that is actually given by your brush context. So this is how it is done. In this, if, if the base when you are actually writing this, you will have to write your base URL, the URL on which you are actually going to do your testing, or you are going to run your application, uh, basically your uh, scenarios and features on this. This can be something on your local. This can be something on the live site as well. You need to have the URL set according to that. Uh, one thing is that what I observed was if you actually set a URL like google.com or you can have your production site or Drupal and then you are trying to run your Drupal context, it's not going to work because Drupal context needs a physical uh, environment where it is Running. In that case, you can actually use something link 
which is going to be very helpful and you can actually write your scenarios or steps according to that and actually test things. That good. So when I installed my B hat, I got this bin file from where my B hat is actually running and it will actually use all the scenarios and it will actually run the features from this file. We don't usually mess around with it, but the next thing is like your feature, this is actually bootstrapped each time. For each scenario, this file is going to be called. Uh, so, uh, like we were saying that we will probably have all my code available over, over here. Like uh, I can write my before scenarios and all this thing over here. So for so when when the scenario is running, it will look for that tag and it will identify whether it needs to be run right now or not. Because this file is being called each time. So as I was saying that. Right now, it extends your raw Drupal context instead of Drupal context because it wants to you to have your entities and you can actually use them. Um, if this is a small example of your feature file, uh, it is not running right now because I'm having issues with my Firefox, so it it actually failed because of this. But I can actually help you. I can explain you this thing right now, like. Given I am on home page, when I'm on home page, I should see my uh, element, or you can, I can see if this should be already available. My that is my site name. Yes. Uh, and uh, what is what else is that when you are trying to install your behind, you actually need. I, I have done by Composer and that's the best thing what I felt was. So you actually need to write your Composer.json. In this you actually write your Drupal extension for your BHAT. Or you can actually write down your BHAT and BHAT version. And when you actually do a Composer install, this is going to run and you'll probably have your dependencies already there. If you want to have something like a specific version of your Things like uh, for my guzzle, like a lot of people use it. And if you want to have something for a specific, uh, you can say version of even Drupal extension, you can actually write down over here. And I actually specify next is your configuration. In this, I specify where my B hat file is, which is going to run that. So as I specified from bin, it needs to find my B hat file. This one to run more So that was it, I guess. So you just execute this dhat or fireman in order to run the head? Uh, for execution, I just need to be on this uh, this directory that is dhat, and then I need to run bin slash dhat, and it will actually run my whole suit. But if you want to run something like specific tag like we were talking like I want only this functionality to be tested. So I can actually write bin slash v hat hyphen hyphen add uh, tags and then my tag name at the rate. So it will actually run those collected tags. Of oh, yeah. And you can even run your fe specific feature files where you have to specify a feature and then the file part. So there are three things. One is the feature file which has the It, it has your custom set definitions, you can see. Uh, site, we had, uh, site, we had 
uh, you only need to create your composer.json file and then you need to have your composer installed in that root directory and then you just run uh, composer install and that's all it is and you have your be hack running. How do you achieve a parallel execution? Excuse me. How do you achieve a parallel execution of test cases? Sorry? Uh, how do you achieve a parallel execution of test cases in BI? Well, let's say I have a hundred of test cases uh, and I have to execute on different instances. Let's say I have to, uh, there is one instance, there is a Firefox browser, other instance with Chrome and I have to execute all these test cases in parallel. Just like, uh, just like we do in Selenium Grid, uh, is there any option in BI we can execute this uh, all suit in parallel execution? Uh, in Bihar, I have not seen it yet. In code section, you can. Okay. In Bihar, you do. I, I have not seen it happening. Because we actually specify the base you have alone here. And is there any testing rep uh, reporting tool for Bihar? Just like uh, we have test ng for Java and all. Deeper level, even for feature, how many scenarios passed and how many not. You actually have to integrate it with Bihar. And you have to have that in your bhi.myml and you need to install it by composer. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the extension name. I, I don't remember it right now, but I guess it was uh, bhat uh, HTTP formatter extension. This was that. It, it actually gives you graphical representation screenshots. Any other questions? That is after importing, you can actually verify whether it was imported correctly or not. That in each element the mapping was correct or not. You can actually verify that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Do we have any other questions? 